In this video, we're going to talk about the Carrier Furnace Recall. Now, this technically isn't news, and there has been a recall on these heat exchangers for high-efficiency furnaces manufactured from approximately 2002 to 2012. And we will list the exact model numbers that are included in the recall. There's about 30 of them listed, and they will be linked in the description. But the furnace is very easy to identify based on the design of the cabinet. And in addition, in this video, we'll be going over some of the background on what a heat exchanger is and why the Carrier Recall does doesn't necessarily mean that you need to run out and replace your furnace. And it's technically not a recall, it was a lawsuit and there was a settlement, but it does mean that you do need to prepare for a replacement. And I'll explain the details of the class action lawsuit and the remedies they had at the time. And I will also give you my two cents on the matter and how I would handle it if I had one of these furnaces in my home. And the main reason I'm making this video, since it's a little different than the content that we normally put out, is because we are coming up on heating season and we are still running into a lot of these furnaces. And the secondary heat heat exchangers that are hitting the 10 year mark or older are starting to fail and they fail by typically plugging up or by admitting carbon monoxide which we pick up with a CO meter. So I figured I would make a video because it's kind of a unique situation but we do run into these furnaces all the time and that being said if you enjoy this content at the end of the video please post a comment in the comment section below letting us know and we'll put out more content about some of the various models and specific recalls that other manufacturers might have had as well if you find this stuff interesting. And if this is your first time tuning into the channel, at the end of this video, there'll be a link to another video about high efficiency furnaces. And make sure you check that out if you haven't done so already and consider subscribing to the channel. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. And it's a free way you can support the channel and helps us out with the algorithm. And it is much appreciated. So the high efficiency furnaces in question are manufactured by Carrier and are under the brands Carrier, Bryant, as well as Payne. And this lawsuit was actually settled back in 2007 with pretty crappy terms in my opinion and it was ironic in the fact that they continued to manufacture the same furnaces with the same heat exchangers until about 2014 and it was still having issues. Now Carrier allegedly resolved the issue with the design but that is actually not the case and the reason we're making this video is because we run into these furnaces a lot in Colorado and they're very easy to identify so if you happen to have one of these furnaces don't be alarmed. Like I said it doesn't mean you need to run out and replace it right away but I do want to give you the facts on what to to look for and what the problem is with this heat exchanger and why there was a recall or a lawsuit in the first place. And also in fairness to Carrier, keep in mind that all major manufacturers of HVAC equipment have had lawsuits and recalls throughout the years. So this isn't that uncommon of an occurrence, unfortunately. There's several other manufacturers who I won't list, but they've had crappy products come out from time to time where me and other technicians have wondered how a lawsuit would have never developed. Uh, this is things like bad manufacturing on coils or poor compressor designs that resulted in a lot of service calls for technicians like us, which yes, it does keep us in business, but it's also frustrating to customers when their brand new equipment has a shorter than expected life expectancy. And honestly, we're the ones typically left holding the bag and making sure that customer is taken care of. So the heat exchanger in question is not the primary heat exchanger on the system. It's actually the secondary heat exchanger. And I'll link another video at the end of this video that explains what a primary and secondary heat exchanger is and how high efficiency works and how they're actually different from their 80% counterparts. But the bottom line is the problem with this particular heat exchanger is that makes it something that can be dangerous. And therefore, this is why they had a lawsuit is because this heat exchanger developed a manufacturing defect that caused pinholes to develop in the heat exchanger. And the problem with pinholes developing in the heat exchanger is that this creates a scenario where the exhaust gases can leak into your airstream through into your home through your ductwork. So here's a picture of the furnace in question and the furnace will look almost identical even if it's a Bryant, Payne, or Carrier because they're all the same manufacturer. But this is what the door looks like. This is actually a picture of a Bryant furnace, but it will be about 40 inches tall and have a single solid door like this. And they can either be Bryant, Payne, or Carrier. And you will not see this component, but just so you know what we are referencing, this is a picture of the secondary heat exchanger that is defective and has the chronic problems. Now, like I said earlier, if you have one of these furnaces, it doesn't mean it has to be replaced right away necessarily unless you're having carbon monoxide issues. The good news is that you should have a carbon monoxide detector in your home and this will keep you safe, but keep in mind it will not pick up carbon monoxide unless it is at a very bad or dangerous problematic level and has reached somewhere between 50 and 200 parts per million concentration in your home. For example, the types of CO meters that we use in your home pick up anywhere between one and five parts per million as a threshold 
cold, but the ones that you have on your wall are designed to go off if there's an emergency and detect a dangerous condition like a leak in the exhaust, for example, or a water heater that's not drafting properly, or a very bad leak in your heat exchanger. And in the event the carbon monoxide levels reach a dangerous level in your home, like 50 or 100 parts per million, that's what these are designed to detect, not small amounts like our meters are. Because the truth is, if you have a gas oven, you might have 5 ppm of carbon monoxide in your house when you're opening and closing the ovens during Thanksgiving and running all the burners on the stovetop at the same time, for example. So if you have a technician picking up a small amount of carbon monoxide in your home and you're wondering why your home's carbon monoxide detectors didn't pick it up, that is why it's just because it's not as sensitive. Now, if there is any indication of carbon monoxide coming off of the top of your furnace on your supply ductwork, it is typically indicative of a bad heat exchanger. We always like to check with a second meter just to verify because if both meters are picking up readings and chances are you have a bad heat exchanger and the system needs replacement, we just want to verify that. Now, in under normal circumstances, you could technically replace the heat exchanger and have a working furnace, but in this instance, because it's a bad design and will essentially fail again, there is no point in doing this. It's basically money to the wind and most companies won't even replace this heat exchanger. From time to time, if someone is looking for the absolute cheapest repair, we will repair or replace heat exchangers, but as a policy, we do not replace this particular heat exchanger for the reason that it's, like I said, money to the wind. And in fact, I don't even think Carrier keeps this secondary heat exchanger in stock. Uh, I know that they do stock the newer designs of heat exchangers on furnaces from 2014 and newer because we have had to replace these periodically, not because of a fault, but just because if there was a blower wheel that went bad, for example, I've seen those puncture the secondary heat exchanger. I've only had that happen a couple of times, but my point is that I don't even think Carrier stocks these particular heat exchangers in reference in this video for the reasons we just went through. So now that you know what to look for and what types of systems have these recall, let's go through the details of the lawsuit. Now, technically claims were supposed to have been submitted by 2008, so we're well past the deadline for that, but even so, the reimbursement was pretty pathetic even then on the newer systems. So at the time this lawsuit occurred, they were reimbursing $270 to anyone who had a previously failed secondary heat exchanger or up to a credit of four hours of labor towards a heating or cooling product with a minimum value of $1,250. And the bottom line is that you had to go out and buy another carrier product and it was a pretty convoluted claim process. So what should you do if you have this furnace in your home? The short answer is if it's working and it's not emitting CO and there are no issues or intermittent issues that are preventing you from having heat, then the short answer is just keep an eye on it. I would definitely have a technician come out for regular maintenance because during the maintenance process, they will check for CO and also check the condition of the furnace and see if there's any intermittent pressure switch air codes because that's typically the air code that will show up when there's a plugged up heat exchanger, which is uh, very common on these furnaces. And it's also one of those things where if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You can leave the system, but if it does stop working, I would definitely budget for a replacement because this is a poorly designed heat exchanger and it's only a matter of time before the issue resurfaces. So hopefully you found this content helpful and informative or at least entertaining. And if you did, please let me know in the comment section below and post any additional questions you might have. We definitely want to put out content that is important to you. And we do read the comments periodically so that we make sure we're connecting with our audience and providing valuable information. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver Metro or Colorado Springs, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free we come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's a link actually in the description below where you can schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now with related content. So if you haven't seen those already, make sure you check them out and we will catch you on the next episode.